every once in a while I'll be browsing around a bookstore and I'll come across a book by an author whose name I recognize but haven't read any of. And uh, this is one of those books. This is actually the set of, I think it was 2008, Gifford Lectures uh, uh, delivered by a uh, professor at the University of Chicago by a woman by the name of um, Jean Bethke Elsting. She's actually the, I'll give you her full title, she's the Laura Spellman Rockefeller Professor of Social and Political Ethics at the University of Chicago. And of someone with, you know, an endowed chair at the University of Chicago giving the Gifford Lectures sounded like a pretty interesting combination and maybe up for, for something provocative. I, I don't know. So I sort of picked it up on a whim, having read the inside cover. <sighs> this book, I tell you. Ugh. Um, <laughs> I'll go into it more later. Um, it's called Sovereignty, God, State, and Self by Jean Bethke Elstein. Um... The idea of sovereignty, like almost any other politically or, or culturally meaningful term, wasn't born in a vacuum and didn't remain unchanged for centuries. And in many ways, El Shetain's sovereignty is a history of this sort of complicated idea from its deeply religious and theological associations in Augustine and and Aquinas to what she refers to as a uh, monist or psychologized sovereignty of the self that holds sway in what she sees as our fractured, fallen, sinful modernity. As the title of the book indicates, Elstein discusses sovereignty at what she perceives to be three critical classical junctures of its development, with the sovereignty of the self being a product, or so she seems to think, of sort of the Enlightenment secular humanism. In the first part of the book, she sees an important shift from Thomistic conceptions of sovereignty, which emphasized God's love and rationality, and especially the ability of the human being to use her intellect to deduce these things about God toward the nominalism of people like William of Ockham. She associates Ockham's nominalism with a prevailing trend toward voluntarism, which shifts the focus away from God's love and rationality, where it previously was, toward the omnipotent volitional will of the individual person. While theology was the locus classicus, really, of this paradigmatic shift, it eventually spills over into the political realm wherein there is a consolidation of power into a single body, either the pope or the prince, uh, as opposed to the idea of the Galatian Two Swords doctrine, which uh, Pope Galatius and uh, a letter entitled, <coughs> excuse me, in a letter entitled Deo Sunt, sent to Emperor Anastasius I in 494. You can look up a Two Swords Doctrine uh, and read all about that. Elstein's intellectual genealogy is right to see in this historical moment both the origins of the all powerful secular prince and those of the archetypal medieval pope one of whose missions was to purposefully blur the lines between the political and the spiritual realms. The second part of the book gives several summaries of thinkers Elstein associates with the view that the rightful place of sovereignty is in the state, including people like Hobbes, uh, Hegel, uh, Carl Schmitt, and uh, Niccolò Machiavelli. Elstein explains how these thinkers, along with Martin Luther, whose fear of civil disorder and unruliness led him to 
give increasing numbers of powers to the king, built the theoretical absolutism which James I and Louis XIV used as justification for their reigns, divine right theory. While the author limbs the origins of shifts in the idea of sovereignty, she never really locates a cause or a rationale. She points to Hegel and shows, I think convincingly, that he places ultimate sovereignty in the state, and later says that movements such as radical feminism have either further atomized sovereignty, locating it at the side of the individual's body, or perhaps somewhere else. But as a reader, I would have uh, appreciated more of an investigation of the shifts themselves and of how one conception over time turned into another. She just sort of gets to modernity and says, oh, it's these radical feminists. I don't know. Um, while the first two-thirds of the book honed in really tightly on the examination of carefully made arguments about ideas, the last part completely falls into that sort of paranoid run away from the radical feminists, uh, conservative, almost, homolytic. Um, instead of following arguments, what she starts to do is blame everything from, like I said, feminism to eugenics to cloning as being part of the irresponsible shift of sovereignty to the level of the human body. She sees these as breaches of deeply Christian humanism, which she seems to espouse in her admiration of, um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the best conceptions of sovereignty which she locates in Augustine and Aquinas. While one can easily agree or disagree with her opinion about modernity, and I guess you can probably tell from the reactions uh, elicited earlier from me uh, what I think about them, it was really the lack of a well-presented defense of God-centered theological sovereignty that made me think a lot less of this book, not to mention the sort of polemics that are in the, uh, the last third. Throughout the book, she also seemed to downplay or ignore the atrocities of our ventures in God-centered sovereignty, like the burning of heretics, for example, the Inquisition... Um, all of that good stuff. Doing the same for all of the progress made during uh, post-enlightenment modernity, like the invention of parliamentarian democracy and women's suffrage and the universal vote and all of that. For those interested in more on the topic, Elschain openly admits to not having a deep background in theology, even though she is competent, I think, in, in what she talks about. Anyone looking for a correction to this should look uh, to Quentin Skinner's much more theologically grounded and scholarly two-volume uh, set called the Collect, uh, this, excuse me, the, the Foundations of Modern Political Thought, especially the second volume which focuses on 15th and 16th century political theory. And incidentally, I just uploaded a review of that book probably a couple of hours ago. So if any of this interests you, that focuses strictly on the theology and doesn't have the sort of more political opinions uh, about modern uh, social issues towards the back of it, since it ends right around the Reformation. But for being Gifford Lectures and for having the reputation that the Gifford Lectures do, this was a really disappointing book. Um, notably bad. Uh, Sovereignty, God, State, and Self by Jean Bethke Elstein.